Okay, guys, let's talk about your anchor and transitioning from your anchor into your walk, which is slightly different than the ladies' part because we're moving backward and they were moving forward. So I talk to you guys often about having your feet a little bit farther apart. You know, you just want to act like a, when you're playing ball. You want to be a little more sporty. So when your feet are together, it makes it seem like you couldn't keep somebody from pushing you over. So you want to appear a little bit stronger. And all you have to do to do that is separate your feet just a little bit. So having your legs a little bit farther apart. When you guys do your anchor, your right foot is dropped back and slightly to your right. I like to say you're playing tug of war. If you were a right-handed person, if you were a left-handed person, that would be this way, but that would be a lady's anchor. So we're gonna act like we're a right-handed person. And if you were playing tug of war, you'd be waiting for the whistle to blow, which is you listening to the song, hearing the six, five and six, and then that was the whistle, and then you will be bringing your opponent into the pit. That's the way it works. But you guys want to have your right foot slightly drop back and over, and you want to make sure that you're not missing any leg action either. So as I take that, if I was going to do a basic for the dude, I would go one, two, three, and four. I'd place my foot in that tug of war position. Now, what's really different about our part and the ladies' part is that when you do your five and six, you're not going to get your right heel all the way to the ground. You're going to keep weight. Uh, off of your heels. So you're going to land toe ball because we want you to have that action and we are not rocking back and forth. We've got our weight primarily over the back foot and we're going to go five and the heel kisses the floor and 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 the heel kisses the floor and when you do your six you're going to think about your toes as the S, the ball of your foot as the I and then the heel of your foot which you would think would be X. We're not going to put that down so we're going to go five and six. So now my quad is still engaged I'm prepared to move an object through space. And then from there, as I transition, as I push myself away from the lady with a rope tied around my waist and tied around her waist, that's when my heel goes to the ground. So you're not actually gonna bear weight on the heel of your foot until you transition from six to the one. So as I do my anchor, five and brace myself and roll through. And that's gonna be pretty fluid. Obviously we're pedaling that stationary bike feeling when we do our five and six, five and six, push one realizing that it's our standing leg that causes the left leg to move through space. Now, a lot of guys aren't backing up on the one anymore. I believe that's because they don't realize that it's their standing leg that moves them through space. So I think they're either thinking that their butt or their shoulders or a body lead, and there is no such thing as a body lead. They can say it all they want, but if I cut your legs off, your body's not moving through space. So when you get to the five and six, it's not your left foot. So what happens is because guys get their heel down on the ground, so from this side, you go five and six. Well, this leg is no longer working. This quad isn't working anymore. So you're not really prepared. You kind of turned your motor off and you got to start your engine at the end to back up on the one, which causes you to be late in transition. So what you really want to do is kind of power break and build some RPMs as you get to the ball of the foot on SI of six. And you go five and now I've got some RPMs working. I got my quad working and now I'm ready to transition into that step backwards. So as I push from that, it causes my left foot to go backwards. What I was gonna say a minute ago is when you go five and six and go ahead and put weight on the heel of that foot, you're not really prepared to send yourself backwards. So as you apply pressure to your partner's hand as you go to move them through space, typically it causes your foot to go straight sideways or even slightly forward on your one, which we see a lot of today, because I'm not sure that the gentlemen out there or the leaders out there are recognizing that they need to use their leg to do that. Right? So when you go five and keep it there, now I'm pushing myself backwards and my left leg is responding to what my right leg asked it to do, right? And then from there, I'll just replace on my two. Now, typically I will go five and six. If I'm gonna back up and she's gonna go by my right side, I'm gonna go one. I like to bring my right foot under my hip. Uh, we can talk about that more. We didn't really go over that a whole lot in class. I do not believe that as a basic, we should be backing up and going forward on the two. It just gives the lady much less slot. So I like to take my right foot, if I push back one on the right side pass, I'll take that under my right hip and then go into what I'm doing next, okay? So that's your anchor step. So if I was gonna go one, two, three, and four, I would prepare myself over the back foot, brace myself on the ball, push myself backwards, and that begins the next pattern for me. So one, two, three, and brace myself, five, and six, push back, one, and that's how I'll get started. So one, two, three, and four, five, and brace, push, one, 
So I am rolling through that heel, but I'm not doing that until I transition from six to one. Go ahead and allow your heel to touch the ground on the five and so that you have the optimal amount of leg action. So your leg is, has a whole lot of bend and a whole lot of straight. So as I go like this, I let it kiss the floor, my leg got straight, I let it kiss the floor, that's a whole lot of straight. I go up six, it's still bent at this time, but as I transition, it got straighter. Instead of me straightening that leg prematurely and then trying to push backwards. So kiss with the heel, kiss with the heel, don't kiss with the heel, roll through the heel, transitioning back into the one. Now, that takes us to our walk, walk for the gentleman. Again, legs slightly apart. This makes, makes it feel a little more dude-like and a little more athletic. And so you'll see oftentimes that the pros out there have a little bit of this one that go backwards. So just think about kind of pushing yourself side to side. So side, side drop that foot back, three and four, and then five and brace on the ball of that foot. So I'm just kind of taking that, it gives me a little bit of dance ability because my body is not just one feet real close together and straight backwards. That doesn't make me feel much like a dude. So as I go backwards from here, it's slightly back and left and slightly back and right. Don't overdo it. And then from there, you're doing uh, your drop triple, which we're going to talk about tonight, three and four. Then staying behind your foot to start your anchor, which is just a big deal. Lots of floating anchors out there these days. Um, it's, it's a bad word. I don't believe in calling it a floating anchor. If I want my partner to travel an anchor, then I'll be a little bit more deliberate about going, hey, you go over there, and then I'm still responsible for catching her and saving her life after she goes over the cliff, and then using my right leg to pull her back up over the cliff's edge right there. And so too many guys out there just kind of shuffling forward on your anchor. There's no way you can be cool and look like a man when you're doing that. So if I want to travel an anchor, it will be deliberate and it'll have something to it, almost like I'm fencing a little bit, something like that. But otherwise, you're not supposed to chase the lady. So just always think about keeping your body position behind your four on a six count pattern. One, two, three, and four. I'm thinking, oh, I'm gonna keep my head behind my foot when I do my five and six there. And oftentimes you'll allow your body to go forward. One, two, three, and four. Now you're already forward and trying to do an anchor, but you've got the weight of your partner kind of helping you mess that up and kind of shuffle forward right there, which is not really cool for you. So kind of stab the ground on your four and say, I'm not going forward anymore. And I'm gonna stay behind that foot on the five and six. And that'll happen even on the side passes as well. So one, two, three, and four. And I'll stay behind my foot, five and six, and then roll to my foot and back up. So guys, that's your anchor uh, and transitioning into your walk, walk on the one, two, and I'm looking for the next elements class. See you soon.